thank you for doing it. So with the president refusing to commit to a peaceful transfer of power, not to mention working to undermine mail-in voting, there's a real risk that millions of Americans will get to a place of, if they aren't already, doubting the legit legitimacy of the election results because of just what they're hearing and seeing from the president. It's something that is of the utmost concern of our next guest. Trevor Potter is joining me now. He's the former chair of the Federal Election Commission, longtime Republican election attorney who's served as John McCain's general counsel during uh, his presidential campaigns, now the founder and president of the Campaign Legal Center. Trevor, thank you for taking the time. When you heard the president say this yesterday, what did you think? I thought two things. The first is that I think what we are seeing here, and, and as your report just described, uh, is a extended, concerted effort to tamp down the vote, to suppress the vote by uh, casting doubt as to whether the voters can really decide this election. Uh, and, and that's very troubling for a democracy, uh, but that's something that the voters themselves can push back on. Uh, we, we are just starting the voting process now. Uh, it will be in-person uh, early voting. It'll be same-day election voting. It is uh, absentee ballot, mail-in ballot. All of those are legal, valid ways of voting. We have a system in place that'll count those votes. So the first thing is to say, I, I do think what we're seeing here is an attempt at, at sort of classic voter suppression, to have the voters feel unmotivated, to worry their vote won't be counted, the post office won't deliver it on time, all the things we've heard. And the way to uh, fight back against that is to go ahead and vote. So that's point one. I think the second point here, which is really important to remember, is that while we have a tradition in this country of the losers of an election conceding and wishing their opponent, the victor, well, that's not a constitutional requirement. And if President Trump loses this election and wants to say he doesn't think it was fair or he thinks there were, as he said when he won last time, millions of illegal votes cast, uh, he can say that, but it doesn't change the outcome. We have a system with an electoral college, with state election officials certifying results after a complete count in every state. Those are then sent to Congress, signed by the governors of the states. They are counted transparently in public by the new Congress in January. So whether President Trump likes the result or not, there is a system in place that he does not control to count those Electoral College votes and to determine the winner. And that is the Electoral College voting, Congress counting it in public. It does not depend on the president, uh, quote, accepting the results. It doesn't depend on a Supreme Court decision in almost any case. The court does not have a constitutional role here. You, as, as the former chairman of the Federal Election Commission, I was sitting here thinking, if you were still in the post, what would you be doing right now? I mean, what, what can the FEC do? Well, I will say one of the problems we're facing, uh, which is an example of, of a broken FEC, is the commission has no quorum at the moment. Right. And so legally, the FEC is sidelined. It can't take any action. But it's largely a disclosure and uh, campaign finance enforcement agency. In this country, the power to count votes is a state power, it resides in the top election officials in every state, often the secretary of state, and then ultimately in the governor to certify the electoral college results. So while the FEC, I think we're at functioning, would be out there pointing out that we have a really comprehensive system based in the states for running elections and counting returns, it, it, the fact it doesn't have a quorum is a problem for other reasons, like enforcing the campaign finance laws, but it is not a problem in this election situation because the state officials are the ones responsible. Well, let me ask you about that, because the, the, this appears that it could be going further than just the 
idea of the president saying he rejects the election results outright when they happen. I want to read for you what some of what the um, Atlantic is reporting, Bart Gellman and his reporting about this. Yeah. He wrote this, according to sources in the Republican Party at the state and national levels, the Trump campaign is discussing contingency plans to bypass election results and appoint loyal electors in battleground states where Republicans hold the legislative majority. With a justification based on claims of rampant fraud, Trump would ask ask state legislators to set aside the popular vote and exercise their power to choose a slate of electors directly. If just your take on that, because if that's going on behind the scenes, I'm kind of wondering what you think. Yeah, that is, I think, the, the most shocking piece of, of a very good Atlantic article. Uh, and, and a couple thoughts on that. Uh, one, I think it's really interesting that a top Trump lawyer was being quoted on the record talking about that. And you have right. to say, why would they do that in September? First, it sounds as if they think they're going to lose the vote counting. So they're trying to find ways to uh, delegitimize or question lawful ballots. Uh, and that's pretty surprising, uh, you know, a long way from the election at this stage. Secondly, though, uh, it's not actually correct constitutionally. They may be talking about that as a way of scaring people, but the reality is that state legislators, after the fact, cannot change the way that electors are chosen. The Supreme Court has been clear, uh, going back to the Florida case, and saying legislators have the option of determining how the vote will occur in a state. But every single state in the country has said we will defer to the voters of this state to select electors. And it is not possible after the election for the legislature to change that method. That would, in fact, violate federal law. There is an Electoral Count Act dating back well over 100 years to when there last was a contested election. Uh, and that act says that the state has to use the system in place under its laws to select electors. And it then sets out that it's the governor, not the legislators, who certify the results and send them to Congress. So I think we're really in a situation here where they're, uh, I think, you know, scaring people uh, and, and not explaining that this is a highly hypothetical situation. And one, as I say, that we are very unlikely to see uh, given our history. Yeah. And, but look at 2020 and what kind of a unprecedented year that's been, though, Trevor, on so many fronts, right? Um, the president went on yesterday, uh, where the president was yesterday and where he kind of focused in on and what he's been obsessed with for quite some time are these unfounded claims of mail-in vote, mail voting fraud. That voting by mail, as we know, is not new and not controversial. You have written about this. You've talked uh, about this. Do you think that he, though, is doing real harm in the fear that he is trying to stroke very clearly with this? Yeah, it, it, it's clearly making people concerned about voting by mail. Uh, first of all, the, the, the issue of will it be counted? And of course, every state has a system in place for counting it. Secondly, for questioning the legitimacy, but that's really a PR gambit uh, because uh, legally a vote cast on an absentee ballot by mail is just as legitimate as one cast in person. And both have the same security safeguards. Both of them require that the voter be identified. They produce an ID or a uh, birth date or a social security number or a signature, a range of ways in which the election officials can ensure this ballot is from a lawful voter. So the suggestion that there are going to be millions of votes from foreign countries and so forth ignores the way the system actually works. But I, I do think uh, it, it has the effect uh, of telling people, gosh, if I can vote in person or if I can vote early, I will avoid uh, all of that, uh, even though both systems are uh, equally valid and equally legal. I do think that there is a point here people need to understand, and that is that there are some states in this country that have voted entirely by mail for years like Oregon and Washington, now more recently, Colorado and Utah, Hawaii. And those states are going to be fine. They're going to vote by mail. Their votes are going to be counted. They have an efficient system. There are other states that are not used to having lots of absentee ballots and, in fact, normally have a very small number. 
And I think the risk here for states like Pennsylvania and New York is that they will be slow in counting because they don't have an efficient system for counting the paper ballots that come in by mail. And that's where uh, there is a concern, I think, that if it takes a long time to count and if it looks as if Republicans following the president's uh, instructions are going to try to vote on Election Day and Democrats are more likely to vote absentee by mail, which is what we're seeing in some of the polling, that on election night, uh, Trump will be ahead in those states. And he's already flagged that he's going to say, ah, you should stop counting the ballots now because I'm ahead. That's like saying halfway through the baseball game, we're going to call it and say the team that's a run ahead wins when you've still got half the innings left. Uh, and, and that legally cannot happen. Those other ballots are lawful ballots and they will be counted. But it will take a while in some of those states. And what we're seeing uh, from the Trump campaign is that they are going to try to challenge ballots uh, mm -hmm. if they can um, uh, as as they are being counted. But there's a system in place for dealing with that. And, you know, the sorts of things we're talking about that the Atlantic article talked about are only even hypothetically going to come into play if this election is really close and comes down to a couple of swing states. And then there will be a back and forth legally in court transparently over whether some of the ballots that came in by mail uh, did not have a signature on them or did, were not mailed on time, issues like that. We're gonna, and, that, and the system that we, that we have watched play out so often is very likely tested in some way or another as we're six weeks out now. Trevor, thank you so much. Trevor Potter, really appreciate it. A programming thank you. note.